Merely a wall separated us as my husband. Nestor waited impatiently outside the operation room for his first love. Weekly, Pamela asked her husband where Sister Sasha was and why I hadn't accompanied them as they were brought out of the surgery room. Nestor said, mockingly, don't worry about her. She's perfectly fine when she heard my name. He was unaware, though, that Pamela was my heart's true love. My life was ended by the nurse covering my body with a white sheet. I was obviously dead. But my soul hovered there. As the physicians performed their procedures in the operating room, I witnessed Pamela's vital signs come to a final rest. I drifted toward her out of instinct as they wheeled her out. With his brows furrowed and his fingers tapping his pocket phone subconsciously, Nestor was pacing at the door. He moved forward fast, his voice showing anxiety. As soon as he saw the doctor emerge, what's up with her? Nestor inquired. The physician paused to speak with him. The timely heart donation made the surgery a success. Nestor's expression softened a little, and he eventually let out a sigh of relief. Are you aware of the donor? Catching up with the doctor, he said, I'd like to thank the family. He shook his head. The doctor said, I apologize, Mr. Joe, but we are unable to share that information as the donor has requested anonymity. Nestor gave a nod. I pondered Nestor's reaction if he discovered that Pamela had received my heart. Would his reaction to my passing be one of sadness or happiness that Pamela could continue to live? Even in death. I experienced a constriction in my chest. I grinned at my own misery. My covered body was carried out shortly after and passed directly in front of Nestor. He gave it a moment's confused glance back before turning around and escorting Pamela back into the ward. Pamela remained in her sleep and Nestor remained by her side. Like an unwanted third wheel, I hung between them. Acknowledging this, I stepped back. Pamela once yelled at me, Sabrina, if it weren't for your scheming, I would have been the one to marry brother Nestor. And I instantly remembered that incident. One day, I was told by Nestor, Sabrina, you should know why I married you. Even if I had been the middleman in their relationship, it didn't matter because I had already made the decision to step back. Albeit not quite voluntarily. Nestor's forehead rested lightly on Pamela's hand as he gripped it closely. I watched them in silence. Not sure how long it took for Pamela's fingers to quiver and her eyes to slowly open. She said, Brother Nestor, in a scratchy voice from just waking up. Nestor's heart constricted at her words. Tears filled Pamela's eyes the instant she saw him. Nestor shouted, Pamela, you're awake, and hurriedly hit the call button by the patient's bed to get the doctor. Pamela remarked, Brother Nestor, I thought I would never see you again. Looking pathetic as tears trickled down her pale cheeks. Nestor caressed Pamela's hand tenderly. His eyes brimming with anguish. No. Things will be all right now. You'll bounce back. I felt a wave of loathing come over me upon witnessing their affection. For them. Everything might be all right. But what about me? After a thorough examination, the doctor determined Pamela's condition was normal and that her time in the hospital would only need to be slightly extended before she could return home. Pamela hesitantly said, Where is Sister Sabrina? Following the doctor's departure, why did she not accompany you? 
My name startled me out of my reverie. Nestor's face became tense, with a tone that suggested distaste. He lowered his eyes. Don't worry about her. With a straightforward, oh. Pamela answered and bent her head, remaining silent. However, I could see a small smile on her lips. It was the same old ruse, purposefully bringing up my name to see how Nestor would respond. Nestor was the only one who was unaware of her plans. Nestor told Pamela he had to head home after supper. Checking the time, Pamela appeared scared as she attempted to sit up. I don't want to be here by myself. Brother Nestor. I'm afraid. He pulled out his phone to check the messages. Seeing that there were none fresh. Nestor paused. Maybe I invite Aunt Mary to visit and stay with you? Our live-in housekeeper. Aunt Mary. Prepared my and Nestor's meals. Can't you remain at my house? Biting her lip. Pamela's voice grew quieter. After a little period of silence. Nestor opened our chat and unlocked his phone. Two days ago. I ended our talk with the words. Let's get a divorce. Don't make trouble out of nothing. Was his response. Nestor's heart softened as he saw Pamela staring at him through red-rimmed eyes like a scared little rabbit. I won't be coming home tonight. Was the message he texted me. Knowing but not knowing how to respond. I pursed my lips. When Pamela finally saw Nestor agree to stay. She grinned. She remarked. I knew brother Nestor was the best for me. Nestor gave her a head pat while speaking in a loving tone. I really can't turn you down. Pamela pulled out her phone when he went to get water from the water room. Is everything handled? She messaged someone with a completely black profile photo on social app after opening her second account. The response arrived almost immediately. Don't worry. Everything is handled. Pamela's eyes glowed with something frigid. She gave her heart to me and died. At least she died for a good cause. Thus, she was not only aware of my demise but also played a part in it. As I turned to face my semi-transparent body and the smug Pamela, I felt a wave of loathing ascend. However, there was nothing I could do. All I could do was watch her live a happy, innocent life in this world beside Nestor. Nestor went back to the chair, got a thermos, and started peeling an apple for Pamela. He did appear to be a little distracted. Though, as his eyes kept going to his phone, which was placed down, he was startled when the phone abruptly rang and his fingertip was cut by the fruit knife. He neglected to clean the wound. Rather, to answer the phone, he strolled up to the window. Hey, Sasha? Sure. I'm not coming home this evening. As he listened, his demeanor somewhat altered. How come? Has she not returned either? After a little pause, he answered, I understand, and hung up. When Pamela saw this, she promptly used a tissue to wrap his finger. What took place, she inquired. Nestor gave a headache. A problem surfaced at the business. I had to leave. It surprised me. Why was he lying when it was evident that Aunt Mary had made the call? Pamela nodded submissively, seemingly oblivious to Nestor's strange actions. Okay. You go ahead now. Nestor went to the door after gathering up his suit. He turned around when he got there and wished everyone a restful night. I'll pay you a visit tomorrow. 
A stirring in my heart made me resolve to go with him as he left the hospital. I was curious to follow his path. Nestor drove home wearing a somber, almost distracted expression. He would open our chat window whenever the light went red and see that I hadn't responded. With a groan, he set the phone aside. I couldn't figure it out. How could he have known? Even though it was obvious that he hated me. Was he expecting a response from me? Our marriage had been, to be honest, a happy accident. Despite being in different years, he was two years ahead of me. We were nonetheless classmates. He had supported me during my school bullying. Though I never tried to disturb his life, I harbored a hidden infatuation on him. I'd heard that Nestor joined the family firm after graduating and had a promising future. I buried those emotions deep inside, knowing I would never see him again. My dad became so deep in debt that he jumped from a skyscraper shortly after that. It was too much for my mom, and she passed away shortly after. I worked during the day and became a hotel maid at night in order to pay off the debt. At the hotel, I ran into Nestor again. They brought him into the presidential apartment on the top level while he was inebriated and unconscious. The drug is in. I overheard a phone discussion while cleaning the restroom outdoors. Come quickly. There is a room card in the space between the door and the side. After that, they departed. After making sure no one was waiting outside, I was going to go. Even though I knew I shouldn't have gotten involved. I looked back once more before I left and noticed that the man on the bed was Nestor. His long lashes framed his face, which was red and flushed as he scowled and closed his eyes. Could I lend him a hand? Is it okay if I just drug him here? He saved me once. Following a brief interval of hesitation, I retrieved the room cart from the space between the door and locked it from the inside. I went to the bedside to try to rouse Nestor after pouring him a glass of water. He looked sleepy as he opened his eyes. Without warning, he yelled out, Sabrina. As he glanced at me, does he know who I am? I was taken aback. His face immediately reverted to a state of bewilderment. Have some water and take a shower. Okay? I reached out to gently touch his shoulder. But Nestor swiftly seized my hand and drew me close to him. Perched beneath him on the spacious bed. I experienced a moment of disorientation. His breath was hot against my skin as he leaned in. And it burned away my reason. My pulse was pounding abnormally. Senior. Please wake up. I pleaded with him repeatedly. But he refused to budge. As soon as his hot kiss touched my lips. I felt my last ounce of rationality dwindle away. A domino effect occurred. Someone was pounding on the door. And I faintly heard them. While crying. Nestor held my face and said. Focus. After what seemed like an eternity. I dozed off and woke up only as the light of day broke through the room. When I woke up last night. I was terrified to see that Nestor was still asleep next to me. I tried to sneak leave. But he woke up to my every move. For what seemed like an eternity. He strained to remember what transpired the night before. All the while staring intently at me. He seemed to recall something as his expression grew more somber. Because my chest constricted. I mumbled. It was an accident. My explanation was ignored by him. Wait for me outside. He murmured with a chill. Before he stormed off to the restroom. I put on my bathrobe and bit my lip as a flood of complaints washed over me. 
Why was he being so cruel to me? His derangement was his fault. Why should I pay the price? A bank card fell to the coffee table as he emerged. A million. Let's pretend yesterday didn't happen. With a voice filled with horror, I proclaimed, no need. As I glanced at the card, my mind reeling from a whirlwind of emotions. In any case, nothing occurred. I exited the room after opening the door. As I rode the elevator, tears welled up in my eyes and my legs felt like they could not hold me up. Because you saved my life. I've decided to think of it as restitution. I attempted to console myself after sobbing my heart out in order to prevent any additional difficulties. In my haste to quit the hotel that day, I neglected to take my morning tablet. With a glimmer of optimism, I purchased a pregnancy test kit the following month after realizing my period was running late. The two red lines on the stick. Though, sent my thoughts racing. Worst case scenario. I ran into Nestor at the hospital while trying to arrange the operation. He pushed by me in his haste, knocking my papers to the floor. As he assisted with their retrieval, he beheld my name and the abortion paperwork. His jaw dropping in shock. You were pregnant? I averted my eyes from Nestor's startled expression as he inquired. I attempted to flee. But he seized me as I stutter talked about how it was none of his concern. We need to talk. So. I wed him while bearing his child. As if by some twist of fate. Following our marriage. He settled all of my bills. I unwittingly intervened between him and his childhood sweetheart Pamela, who turned out to be the one he had been engaged to. The baby's untimely demise is a tragedy. After four months of marriage, I lost my temper due to Pamela's persistent provocation. She used the terms of bastard and wretch without parents to describe my unborn kid and myself for the first time. She shoved me down the stairway to the second floor. Despite my best efforts to remain calm, I watched as she twisted her face into a menacing smile in agony, then collapsed to the ground, clutching her heart. Our unborn child had already passed away by the time Nestor reached the hospital. While I sobbed on the bed, Nestor asked me, are you aware that Pamela has a heart condition? His expression was one of deep concern. Her stress levels must be low. How did you harm her? I was so shocked that I widened my eyes. I was completely inactive. Took a shove at me. She is no longer with us. Pamela is a kind girl. Nestor murmured. His lips pursed as he glared at me angrily. This would never happen with her. Sabrina. I am let down by you. And with that. He strode out without pausing for reflection. My one and only connection to Nestor has been severed ever since. His demeanor toward me remained icy and uncaring. And he never again touched me. Pamela took great pride in portraying herself as the innocent neighbor girl when Nestor was around. But she bullied and insulted me whenever he wasn't. Hold tight. I'll be the one to return him. She broke my heart while trying to get Nestor back. Something I never thought she would do. I intended to have Nestor sign the divorce papers when he was ready. But I had already done so. If Pamela had given me the opportunity, I would have escaped the city without a second thought. I was coerced into leaving the house at the crack of dawn by her false alarm that Nestor was in danger. She told me to meet her. I went to Road since it implicated Nestor. Even though I was skeptical of its isolated position, a deliberate vehicle collision greeted me upon my arrival. 
much to my astonishment. No one would notice if I vanished because I don't have any relatives or acquaintances. Therefore it doesn't matter when Pamela chose me as her target or how she forged my contribution approval form. She was successful. At the sound of Nestor's abrupt breaking, I briefly shut my eyes, saying, Oh, we're home. He continued. The moment we stepped foot in the door, Aunt Mary was already greeting us and admonishing Nestor. Sir, Madam hasn't returned yet. When did she leave? Nestor inquired with a scowl face. According to Aunt Mary, she got a call at about 8 in the morning and promptly stepped outside. Nestor went directly to my room after giving Aunt Mary the signal to keep working. My departure had no effect on the room's condition. To his relief, Nestor searched my closet and saw that all of my belongings were still there. Where did you go? He texted me from his phone as he sat on the couch. How peculiar that he seems hell-bent on tracking me down today. For a few minutes, I observed him waiting. His eyes landed on my desk, where a stack of papers lay, right before he was ready to dial my number. Standing up, Nestor took them in his arms. The papers I had signed for my divorce were these. A shadow quickly fell over him. He dialed my number while holding the divorce papers firmly in one hand. The number you have dialed is switched off. The chilly. Robotic message that comes on the other end. Please try again later. Only served to deepen the scowl on his face. How could I have possibly answered his call after the vehicle accident broke my phone? It was entertaining to watch his out-of-the-ordinary actions. Before my abduction, he hadn't cared about me at all. But now he's worried sick about me. I found it ironic. Stop being stubborn. He texted me once more after pulling out his phone. Return when you have finished being a nuisance. An overwhelming sense of melancholy washed over me as I read those lines. How long until he understood that I had abandoned him for good? When Nestor visited Pamela in the hospital the following morning, he brought a breakfast that Aunt Mary had prepared. When Pamela saw Brother Nestor, her eyes gleamed. Your favorite foods are these ones. Consume additional food to speed up your recovery. Nestor placed the food on the tiny table with care. His alert demeanor caused me to gasp for air. Well, I shouldn't be breathing at all. Right? I was really upset since Nestor had no memory of my food preferences. Or rather, he didn't give a damn. Although I don't eat spicy food or scallions. The first time we went out to dine with Pamela, he picked a Sichuan restaurant because she enjoyed it. I hardly touched my lunch as they had a friendly conversation. Sister Sabrina. Don't you like the restaurant Brother Nestor chose? Or do you just not want to eat with me? Asked Pamela. Half-jokingly glancing at me. Nestor looked at me curiously. So I said. No. I'm just not very hungry today. I had to will myself to take a few bites of the boiling pork slices soaked in oil. I put up with the pain to eat with them. But I was left with a painful stomach. I had to visit thee. Um. In the middle of the night because the agony was so bad when I came home. At the time. Nestor's reply was. How can you be so delicate? This is what you get from eating one meal. Pamela is doing really fine. I ended up spending three months in the hospital because I was too pale to speak. When I finally snapped out of my reverie, Pamela was pouting and acting pampered. Can you feed me? Brother? I'm not looking to move. 
Nestor laughed and seemed to recall something. Just as he was ready to agree. Pamela. You're a grown-up now. He said. Your brother can't feed you all the time. Unexpectedly. Pamela was taken aback by his refusal. I remembered our previous argument as it floated close by. What do you think of me? And what do you think of Pamela? In response. Nestor had said. Pamela and I shared a childhood. To me. She is like family. Stop being so unreasonable. Sabrina. Regardless of how much you two still resemble family. You are now adults. Shouldn't you maintain a suitable distance? I'll go if you want to be with her. In any case. Our union was accidental. I had sobbed deeply. Believing that I shouldn't have had to go through all of this if it weren't for saving him. Nestor was temporarily agitated because he hadn't anticipated me to be this upset. Avoid crying. In the future. I'll exercise more caution. Is it possible that he remembered what I said? Which is why he turned down Pamela at this point. I couldn't help but question whether or not I was being silly. Why would Nestor give a damn about what I said if he didn't love me? Are you growing weary of me? Brother Nestor? Pamela inquired. Tears dancing in her eyes. In a panic. Nestor reached for a tissue to dab at her tears. No. Don't lose your cool. It won't help your heart heal. I'll never grow weary of you. Pamela pressed her head against Nestor's chest and wept some more. Nestor tensed. But instead of shoving her away, he gave her a reassuring stroke on the back. My pulse raced with resentment as I saw Pamela's masquerade. She was capable of hurting both me and my child. But she could still play coy around Nestor. I love brother Nestor the most. Pamela wept. Had Sabrina not wooed you, would you have agreed to marry me? Nestor fell silent for a moment after hearing this. Pamela. There are no ifs. He added softly. If Sabrina disappeared, would you still stay by my side? My heart issue has been corrected. So I am no longer a burden. I refuse to bring you down. Pamela. Her face set in resolute determination. Grasped his sleeve. Nestor let out a sigh. I won't betray the trust one made with your parents to look after you. Don't worry. I won't leave you even after I get married. I sneered. Pamela seemed submissive as she leaned against him. But jealousy flashed in her eyes. Nestor visited Pamela and then headed to the office. He turned back abruptly as he passed the reception. He inquired. Have you seen my wife these past two days? The front desk agent pondered for a while. No. Nestor's gaze became gloomy. As he was about to go out the front desk clerk had an epiphany. What is it? Mr. Joe? Nestor took a step back. The call came in from your wife this morning. She questioned if you had visited the office after saying she was unable to get in touch with you. I said no to her because you hadn't shown up yet. I contacted the receptionist yesterday morning. She said. Yes. I had attempted to reach Nestor after getting Pamela's call. But his phone was off. Then. Before leaving. I gave the office a call to make sure he hadn't gone to work. After listening to the receptionist. Nestor appeared perplexed. He strolled inside his office and said to himself. I didn't get her call yesterday morning. When he checked his phone once more. I was still not responding. How much longer will this last? 
With a sigh, Nestor grabbed the intercom. Secretary Liu, please reserve a table for two at a restaurant tonight in honor of our wedding anniversary. I turned to stare at him in shock after hearing this. Nestor messaged me again, adding, I made a reservation at a restaurant. Is it possible for us to share dinner tonight? A sharp pain pricked my nose and my heart became numb. Yes. It was our first anniversary as a married couple. But really. Why treat me properly now? Brother Nestor. When are you coming to be with me? Pamela said over the phone in the afternoon. With his gaze locked on his dead phone. Nestor scowled. I apologize. Pamela. But I'm a little busy today and can't find time to visit you. He snapped back to reality. Pamela sounded unhappy and said. All right. I mean. Would Nestor really turn Pamela down for dinner? I was a little taken aback. But I knew Pamela wouldn't give up quickly. As predicted. The hospital called shortly thereafter. According to the doctor. Pamela had fainted and needed a family member to go with her because of her delicate state. Nestor had a rare expression of displeasure on his face. But he continued driving to the hospital. How is Pamela doing? Nestor stopped and turned to face the doctor next to him after noticing Pamela curled up in bed with her eyes asleep. The physician answered. Miss B fainted because she became very emotional and was unable to breathe. She requires company while she is alone. Nestor had to bide his time till she awoke. I was unable to keep the appointment. But he continued looking at his phone. Maybe thinking about our dinner plans. Two hours later. Pamela awoke slowly. Brother Nestor. She said. Her eyes welling up with tears once more upon first seeing Nestor. Pamela. I'm going out to eat with Sasha later on today. Being with you is just too much for me. As soon as she awoke. Nestor cut her off. It caught Pamela off guard. Sister Sasha, she inquired. I can't leave her hanging in case she shows up. But she hasn't replied yet. A nod from Nestor indicated his agreement. With a mischievous glint in her eyes. Pamela dipped her head. She must be wondering how Sabrina could possibly make it to supper since she is already dead. Right? After saying. Rest well. Nestor got to his feet and started to walk away. When Pamela stood up and attempted to get out of bed. She stumbled and fell. Brother Nestor. She said. Hi. Pamela. In a flash. Nestor whirled around to come over and assist her. While he was doing this. He saw a little pendant that had dropped off the bed. It was the necklace's star charm. He reached down and asked Pamela. What's this, before passing it to her? It's my pendant. Pamela said. Her expression slightly shifting. Nestor recognized the jewelry as Pamela hurriedly placed it away. But he couldn't place it. After getting Pamela back into bed. He wasted no time making his way to the eatery where we were supposed to meet. But I never showed up. And he waited all night. Something didn't add up as Nestor continued to think about it. After much deliberation. He decided to hire a private investigator. Assist me in determining Sasha's whereabouts. I bobbed along with him. Seeing his agitated face. Truthfully. I was also wondering how Pamela had handled our interaction. I received a prompt response from the private investigator. Who informed me that the airport. Port. 
or train station did not have any records of my ticket purchase. The most recent CCTV footage showed me requesting a cab outside our residence. Anxiety spread across Nestor's face as he read the investigator's note. And a sinking sensation descended into his chest. Follow that cab. He instructed. Quick communication with the driver confirmed that the cab was authentic. I was dropped off. According to the driver. But he didn't know anything else. In that faraway place. There was no watchdog system. Why was she even present? One thing that Aunt Mary had said that Nestor remembered was that she had gotten a call at about 8 in the morning and gone out. Without delay. He gave the order to locate a means by which she could view her call logs and identify the caller. He probably didn't tell the authorities because he was holding on to some optimism. It was easy to review the call logs. Pamela was the one who last called. It was as if lightning had struck Nestor's face. The coffee cup on his desk was knocked over when he suddenly rose to his feet. He was oblivious to the fact that the papers were splattered with warm coffee. Nestor recalled that he and Pamela had been at the hospital when I called. Which explained why he hadn't gotten my message. His phone had been requested to be used for gaming by Pamela. After that, he reviewed the security film once more. It was a little hard to see, but I was sporting a necklace featuring a star pendant. In that instant, Nestor's face lost all color. Repeatedly, he reached out to the private investigator. Find out who gave Pamela the heart. I was astounded by how perceptive Nestor was. It appeared as though his astonishment and pain were real at that time. A trace of remorse appeared on his normally icy countenance for the first time. Sabrina was the donor. According to the investigator's swiftly arriving email. With his lips entirely white. Nestor gently closed his eyes. Oh. So it was you. He whispered. When he turned around to face me while I was wrapped in a white sheet. I wasn't sure if he was remembering yesterday at the hospital or the day before. Following Pamela. Nestor reached the hospital at a speed of 120 miles per hour. The door to Pamela's room was pushed open. And he stepped inside. Brother Nestor. I'm late. What gives? While slightly scowling, Pamela inquired. Any news on Sasha? Nestor's voice lacked any trace of passion. Sasha. Sister? Pamela frowned and blinked as if she were innocent. Pamela. I can only take so much patience. Can you tell me where Sabrina went? Pamela sat on the bed. Dwarfed by Nestor as he stepped forward a few steps. Sabrina had that star pendant on when she vanished. What was the point of being with you if you truly are unsure? On the verge of lying again. Pamela chewed on her lip. Her wrist was seized by Nestor. Which one is this heart? Does Sabrina own it? Just tell me. Pamela took a back seat since she couldn't continue. It is. In fact. Hers. She passed away. Her remarks caused Nestor's eyes to grow gloomy. I demand to see her corpse if she is deceased. Where on earth is she? As if she had caught wind of a humorous joke. Pamela chuckled. Would you like to see her get justice at this time? Sabrina became a barrier between us when she tempted you. Became pregnant. And then used vile tactics to get you to marry her. The location of her death is irrelevant. I managed to live a comfortable life without Sabrina after taking her heart. Will we tie the knot? Shall we? Her face went completely crazy. I will never wed you. 
regardless of her condition. In my mind, you have always been a sister. You were never really loved by me. Where on earth is she? In his wrath, Nestor yelled out. Resentment distorted Pamela's face. I dispersed them in the water after burning her to ashes. You will never locate her. Nestor's eyes flashed with agony. Despite his clamped teeth, tears continued to fall. I was startled that he cried for me. Then the officers entered from where they had been waiting at the door. Pamela's eyes got bigger. You made a police call? Nestor was all hate as he stared at her. Naturally. But I'm not going to let you go. You still have Sabrina's heart beating inside of you. After all. Pamela was probably right when she said that my body was fully gone because she had taken care of everything so properly. Nestor. Though. Didn't buy it. He looked around frantically. Trying to find my body. I would tell him to stop if I could talk. His late love is worth less than grass. Why is he acting so hurt now? When he never loved me. After a while he brought out a picture album from the study. This was my student ID photo on the first page. I was quite aback to see that Nestor had my missing student ID from my first year of school. I felt bad for not treating you better. And I questioned whether things would have worked out differently if I hadn't given Pamela false hope out of my intense concern for her. Nestor studied the picture for a long moment. Then put it in my star jewelry in a little box. He murmured to himself. Hugging the box and saying. You probably don't know. But I've always loved you. Even though you didn't love me. I kept you by my side. Fearing you'd leave. So I kept testing and hurting you. Which ultimately caused your death. I was in error. I was perplexed. Was the reason I was emotionally devoid while I witnessed his suffering? Nestor purchased a piece of land and buried the box with the pendant and picture. He came to my cemetery every day after that. Carrying a brand new bouquet of lilies. And he would sit there for hours drinking and talking endlessly about the past. He came to the realization that I wasn't the one who had drugged him and that the drug hadn't rendered him completely insane. He needed time to cool down because even though he knew it was me and chose to go along with it. He couldn't face me afterwards. I abruptly quit and went missing for a month. He looked all over before he discovered me at the hospital. On the verge of an abortion. He was determined to marry me and win me back because of this. He genuinely thought Pamela's pushing me down the stairs was an accident. He had been bequeathed Pamela by her parents. Who trusted him with her care before they died. Contrary to what Pamela said. They were never engaged. To spare her frail heart any hardship. Nestor merely wished to shield her. He may have made excuses. But the damage he did to me was real and unacceptable. Both Pamela and the hitman she employed were apprehended and given life sentences. Using his power. Nestor made her prison life unbearable. He refused to visit her despite her persistent attempts to get in touch with him via the guards. Pamela committed suicide in prison not long after. Nestor was at my grave. Softly wiping the tombstone with a damp cloth when he got word of her passing. Dead. As long as her heart is returned. He murmured. His voice cold as he took the call. While driving back. Nestor lost concentration and collided with a truck that was speeding and had run a red light. His hands left the steering wheel as he whispered. See you in the next life. As he passed away. It was not surprising. Nestor passed away right away. 
I realized my time had arrived when I saw my body get more and more translucent. I just want to be happy and at peace in the hereafter. And I never want to see Nestor again. But I found myself back in the hotel bathroom when I opened my eyes. Someone was talking on the phone outside. Claiming that the room card was in the door gap and the drug was running low. I had been reborn because of that familiar discourse. I was astounded to see myself in the mirror and realize that I was once again a hotel maid. I hurried out after the people outside had left. Nestor was semi-conscious as he lay on the bed. Remembering every detail of my previous existence. I opened the door and walked out without turning around. This time. I would respect other people's destinies and let go of my need to save everyone. My life would be well lived for me. After watching the story above. Do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video. Please like. Subscribe. And share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.